Welcome here to Helsinki, Finland, where we have the Helsinki Tournament 2016 for Clash Royale. Play earlier today, it was it was a lot of it was a lot of counterplay. That's what we saw the most. Uh, it was just an, an incredible amount of just waiting for his opponent to make a move, and then he had uh, counters ready. He's already going in for this goblin hut. And uh, we see the mortal go straight down from Steroidy, but the, uh, I think it is actually... This is completely wow. because of the speed on those goblins. Fantastic play. I love the idea that he's actually gone for the goblin hunt instead. Just to outspeed that mortar, and immediately you can tell that Nazim has done his homework. Yeah, the, Nazim is 100% ready for this mortar. He has the building, the cheaper building in the goblin hut to, to distract the mortar from shooting his towers. And he's got the lightning ready as well to deal serious damage to the mortar. I don't think the mortar's going to do much at all in this game. Okay, so, and just like that, he has the lightning ready to go, so he waits for the goblin power to appear and then goes straight in. Fantastic play right there as well. You see the skeletons are going to split off. Skeletons not too much of a threat by themselves. They do die in one hit to the towers, but again, uh, Nazim's got this defense going up uh, again against this mortar. We see the Tesla Tower and the Inferno Tower. So many buildings coming out from Steroidy right now. That's a lot of modification right there, I mean, and it's just going to act as one giant distraction. The question is, is the bomb going to reach the target? Oh, just like that, wow. taking out the mortar, which is definitely the threat in this situation. Well, if it's a question of Tesla Tower, Mortar, Inferno Tower, the mortar every day of the week is the one that you want to get rid of first, especially if it's enraged to damage your own buildings. And they're straight in with the rocket. It really is no surprise that he has a rocket available to go. And I love the way that he's gone by this deck. Now, steroidy has been playing this really well. However, how many of those rockets is Nazim going to have on deck to literally, if he's going to play for the one tower, and he's already done that much damage to Steroidy's tower, I mean... <laughs> Who's going to take the first one, you know? It depends. I mean, this, he's, pl he's playing for this extremely defensive set of cards. But right now, it's not really working out for him. But the is actually playing this really clever. He is just, this deck is built to counter the mortar. He has the building to distract it. He has the rocket to do guaranteed building damage. All he's doing is stalling out, defeating the mortar, defeating the Tesla Towers. Get rid of the mortar, and then bam, his rockets are going to do all the damage he needs. He doesn't need to push. He just needs to destroy the mortar so he can do rocket damage. That is going to be two Teslas back to back. Now, the mortar is probably going to target one of those things. Nice Goblin Hunt just to go behind the enemy. Lines. That's going to be good damage, but even better reservation of that lightning spell. Ready with those reactions, just in case. You see a bit of a stalemate going on. Again, the Goblin Hut's going to take a mortar shot. Going to take one more shot. No, it does destroy itself. I think it'd be a, a clean shot on the Princess, at least. I think what's out in the field right now is literally the, the epitome of what story has been doing. You have all of these buildings ready to go. And it's just it's hard to just penetrate that kind of defense. But I mean, the question is, has has Nazim got a rocket on deck and is he saving it? But the problem is, it's a lot of Alexa and he hasn't got a lot available right now. But we are down to 10 seconds left. This 900 health tower on the right steroidy is in a little bit of trouble, especially considering he's done so little damage to Nazim's building. Nazim's been saving a lot of Alexa, and just so I can say that, going in for a push. The question is, what's going to accompany this giant skeleton? I mean, th there's no way the giant skeleton's going to get through, but he's just soaking up all this damage. The, oh, the Tesla tower's down, the minion's going to go down. Oh, Goblin Barrel goes through! Secret Goblin damage. Barrel, how much damage? Has he been saving the lightning? Yes, he has! Great reactions there, ready to go. And the princess is just going to sit pretty right there, chipping away at that of those giant buildings there. Take out once again, the mortar is distracted because once again, Nazim has saved the spawner unit there just to get through the mortar. Now the minions do manage to get through, but they are quite low. We can see this barbarian hut's going to do a really good job of just distracting all the stuff. It's just, it's pure distractions. Nothing Steroidy has is getting past this middle point. That tower's looking pretty delicious for a rocket right now. I mean, let's not be around the bush. This giant, if this giant skeleton gets a good push, all he has to do is get through. Golden barrels once again. Has he been saving the lightning? Yes, he has. Good really defense. smart play. I mean, again, the, the barrel's doing damage on impact. It's doing some unavoidable damage, but he's managing to save himself from a lot of goblin damage. But again, this is this princess again, but the mortal's got through. There the we go. How much damage is it going to do? Ooh, 100 left. All he needs to do is get one final thing. Nice use of the arrows right there. 11 oh, no. hit points left. Anything from range will do at this point. Fantastic game. Cards they haven't played. So you guys and girls at home watching are just as in the, blue, uh, in the uh, you know, sort of in the... Uh, well, I guess mystery as we are. Now you can see there's there's uh, some buildings put up almost immediately, and that's one of the benefits of this Tesla Tower is that it's kind of hard. It, it only does out damage when there is something in its vicinity, right? So it can actually kind of sit there pretty, um, sit and quite safe. Now, what we saw in the last game was the fact that almost immediately Nazim has gone. Uh, yes, obviously stick with his deck, but he's going to stick to this idea of just constantly going for the sporty units. Now, Steroidy has been quite reluctant to go for a mortar. He might not necessarily have one. Has gone for the Hog Rider. I do believe this is the first time we've seen him go for this deck. Now, well, this I think specifically we, we may have seen Steroidy completely. Uh, 
uh, abandoned this mortar deck. I'm not sure uh, how much we have. This old deck was purely crafted for the mortar, we can see. But I, mean, I bet we just we haven't seen a mortar this game yet, from it. That's one of the smart plays that we tend to do. Already going in, the skeleton is distracted. Now that's one of the combinations, and again, saving that lightning spell every single time, remembering that he has a Goblin Barrel ready to go. So, I mean, there's no reason you, you, you would change that instant piece of damage. Really smart there from Strody just to keep that card in line, ready to go. But I really like this uh, this adjustment to the Hog Rider, because we've actually seen the Hog Rider make a lot more uh, of an impact in today's tournament than we have seen them all. So the Hog Rider definitely a, a tried and true uh, force to be reckoned with today. Nazim got a lot of mileage out of the Hog Rider as well, though, in his, in his original set of the uh, quarterfinals. He's going to be familiar with that card. Oh no, a bit of a waste from the lightning by Nazim. Tries to finish off the Tesla Tower, but it will die naturally, so a bit of a waste of Elixir, unfortunately. Odd Rider's going to go straight and try to get out. I'm not sure if that was a freeze. Nice once again. That's a really good combination, that freeze on the Hog Rider. Going straight, going to get some of that poke down defensive. The Princess is going to get one shot. He's going to get at least one hit right there. Kind of shaving that tower, not doing too much. So now, but once again, like, like a sport, we're using this new uh, spectator mode, this observer mode. We have seen Storody has played every card in his current deck. No mortar to be seen. He's completely abandoned it. I like that play. I mean, trying to show that he has other things ready to go. Um, and also the fact that he can change deck when Nazim is locked into a deck that is tiny built to counter mortar. Or oh, the fireball is going to. Wow, it's going to hit both the hut and the tower for a nice amount of damage. But we can see this this spawner tactic from Nazim. He's got a goblin hut and a barbarian hut. Hog Rider goes down, but he's going to go straight for the. No, it's going to go straight for the tower. He's going to clearly get through. This could be a dead tower on the left if we don't see retaliation. There's a lot of push going in right now. Going in with the freeze just for good measure. Oh, wow. And he gets a very crucial rocket. The goblin, don't make it goblin. Single goblin running straight in there. Getting that secret little hit to take out that first tower. Story great situation. Has he saved the lightning? That's the question. Yes, yes, you had once again. I mean, I would be very surprised if we ever catch him without that lightning ready to go. And just for that situation, not overcommitting, saving the lightning, keeping his elixir ready, and he can just play on that one tower. Looking really good for Storody right now. Oh, hey, health left didn't do enough damage. Hog runner goes down. That was a good game from Storody. That was clutch. No one's overcommitted to anything. Sometimes we can see potentially of early hog riders and stuff. But for the most part, these guys will just sit there speaking of early hog riders. He's going to have to go and unfortunately does actually commit to just having the uh, icebergs on the right hand side. Double freeze right there. Oh wow, they froze each other. Wow, really, really uh, interesting stuff. Hog rider is going to lose. Now that was the important thing. The hog rider had to die. That was why the freeze was put down. Was because, okay, if this hog rider is let loose, my tower is in serious trouble. Argus is going to run in, completely get taken out by that minion unit right there. It's a bit of a mirror match on the left hand side. Getting the lightning just to get a little bit of damage on the tower. Now, oh, nice stuff. One low minion. That really isn't going to do anything. It's going to get shot off by the tower. And see you later. Farewell. Okay, so we have gone back to this kind of uh, defensive situation. The, both guys opting to kind of save up some elixir and maybe wait for what the other guy's going to do or save up for some kind of big push. Well, let's see what they've already played. We can see both of them have uh, the standard goblins. Both of them have the, the minions. But they have a little bit of differences. We can see the first Tesla tower deployed from Steroidy. Uh, definitely seems to favour this building, it seems. It's definitely an effective building, just kind of sitting there pretty in the front. Hog Rider running in right as the Valkyrie gets spawned. And I like the defense there, waiting for the Inferno unit. Once again, that's the strength of the Inferno Tower, is that it's single damage and extremely high burst. So these uh, slightly high hit points, but single damage, high damage targets will get melted by the Inferno Tower. I mean, just look at that. It does so much damage. Yes, it does passively lose life over time, but still, just the fact that it's there, it's distracting the big uh, the big units, and it's doing so much damage to them before it dies itself. Both players going to use lose their buildings at this point. I like the idea. Yeah, just poking out there with the poison just to get a little bit of damage there on those barbarians to kind of sort of quell their offense just a little bit. Takes all the barbarians down to about half, but there's a lot, a lot of units going through. The minions are going to be deployed to defense. The lightning is good. Does serious damage to the tower, but the barbarians get through the freeze. The barbarians are going through big damage. Wow, this tower is going down, getting chunked. Lost at least about four That is a really good amount of poke right there, especially now we have 60 seconds left on the clock. The question is, what's the next play? Double, uh, double elixir has been activated with there's 60 seconds left on the clock so uh, a lot of scripts are aggressive and very fast paced play. Speaking of aggressive we have a hog rider paired out with a couple of goblins good to go that's going to do quick damage right there so that you're going to completely ignore them the hog rider is going to run up behind this could be it good use on the freeze double freeze once again shades of the beginning of the game rears its head oh the hog rider gets one last hit off 355 health that, that one lone left. hit might be crucial depending on what comes next hog rider gets through is there any defense left it's going to go oh wow Two towers that Hulk Rider wasn't going anywhere, but Hulk Rider on the left gonna go through. They're trying to distract him. Getting Ooh, one cheeky one hit again. once again. One more hit from Hulk Rider is all it's gonna take. Goblin's gonna run through. That's not gonna do any damage. That's that dangerous. Steroidy has access to lightning. We don't know if it's in his hand, but 99 health. He just needs to chip that away. 
Nice positioning there, the Barbarian. So here comes the Valkyrie. Here comes the Fireball! Great play right there! Scroidy's going to take that tower and once again move on into the next. Managed to get themselves down to top four out of 200 of some of the best players in the world. Now, is Nazim going to be able to pull this one through and tighten that knot, bringing it one game apiece away from winning? Or is Steroidy going to take this 3 1 and move into grand finals? We'll have to wait and see. Going into the Hog Rider once again. I mean, it's a very powerful unit, one of the most, if not the most pop popular unit of this tournament so far. Yeah, there you see the minion horde go down. Icewind's going to try and take them out, but it is going to get destroyed. I don't see these minions doing much. The Valkyrie is good. I mean, let's but not forget the straight from the Valkyrie. I mean, it's not necessarily against the minion group because they are airborne, but her ability to uh, attack in a circle around her, uh, taking up multiple units. Here comes the Lone Hog Rider once again. Good patience on the Inferno Tower to just distract that unit and take him out easily. Now, that really is the make or break we're seeing. If you've got a building ready to distract the Hog Rider, you're okay. But if you get caught without it, that's when you start taking some serious damage. We've seen people get caught with without it before and it's done a big chunk of damage and in many cases they have been quite deciding factors that hog rider push with the the, the troops behind that will just dish out the damage and act as good distractions i mean it just hasn't stopped really has it uh, see uh, Nazim setting up the push again with the Ice Wizard, but we see the Goblins still left. Not quite sure how much damage they'll do by themselves. Maybe just a distraction. Not quite sure what that was about. Sometimes it might, be a, it might be a way to potentially bait out arrows to see maybe Nazim has some arrows good to go. Maybe it's just clearing the unit uh, and just making some space. But going up the Ice Wizard, is he going to get one hit? Is going to get one lone hit? But unfortunately, going to get erased very quickly with that minion army. But and man yeah, manages to chip down a little further. He's doing a little bit of damage infrequently to the tower, but slowly but surely it is going to add up. And when we, especially when it's coming from a Hog Rider, or there goes we've got Hog Rider and Barbarians going to That's a chunky offense right there. They're going to go and try and take out those minions. Nice freeze just to pause those units right there. Very crucial the fact that he had a Hog Rider and some chunky Barbarians running over with him. Great use of the freeze just to stop that offense dead in its tracks. So it's really good. Minions are going to go down. The Valkyrie manages to take out the tower, but again, uh, Steroids is going to keep himself in this game, going to take them out before they do any tower damage. Obviously, if Tessa Tower go down again, this is where things are going to get crucial. Double Elixir, 60 seconds left before we go into sudden death, and it's going to decide one tower could send either of these guys into a bad situation. Oh, Hog Rider goes in close, goes straight past the Barbarians. The poison's good. I like the idea of accompanying him with the poison, going in with the freeze as well. Good defense. That's going to do a good chunk of damage right there. And it's going to even things out quite nicely on both towers. Now, Nazim is sitting in a good situation. Good Inferno Tower to distract the Hog Rider, otherwise, that push would have been for nothing. Going to slowly but surely take away some damage from both of them. Left tower sitting at 1300 for Nazim is doing a good job of just chipping this down. Inferno Tower is still there so he's going to save himself from a push for at least a little while. Steroidy's definitely on the back foot right now. He has a lot more work to do but once again one good push, one crucial little mistake could decide everything. Battle ends in 10 seconds. We probably are definitely going to go into overtime. Nice use of the poison just to quell those offensive units. That's going to do good damage to basically all of them. Varicure's going to run in there and do some good circle damage around as well. Now, I, I, feel, I feel like the poison was a great choice because look at the amount of damage that did. He managed to get Max poison damage on multiple targets. Here comes the Hog Rider running in, but the test tower is going to use up. Oh, nice freeze! freeze. Once again, that tried and past. tested combination of the freeze and the Hog Rider, but both players using their freeze. So once again, we're going to find ourselves at a stalemate. So freezing on reaction to your opponent's freeze truly is a way to go, no, this freeze isn't going to work. My freeze won't do much, but at least it's going to stop you from getting anything off it. It's just a complete definition of a stalemate. Good use of the Inferno Tower once again. That's going to do good damage once again. These guys are doing very similar plays to one another. I mean, that pairing of the goblins with the hog rider. I mean, it does so much work. Is, is the hog rider going to take out this tower before he dies? He's going to run straight through. He is going to go down. It's going to save himself some damage, but we see this wizard doing AoE damage. This ice mage doing huge damage to these barbarians. I don't think they're going to get to him before he manages to kill them, especially with the Valkyrie behind him. I really want to know what this final unit is. This already has good to go. We're yet to see it, but Nazim has played every single ounce of his cards, and as you can see, hasn't got a fireball, hasn't got a okay. rocket. He has I to push. I was about to say, he hasn't used this final card. It's either a rocket or a fireball. So big damage man, he's got to try and stall. I like the idea. Stalling with the lightning to potentially build that final piece of elixir to get that freeze on deck. He's still going to get some poke and it's still in a bad situation. But I think that freeze was everything. Now that was good damage. Considering this is still sitting pretty at max health on his towers, he is in no danger here. But if Steroidy can at least manage to last a minute and 40 seconds, even if he manages to get some tower down or but keep his towers alive, he might manage to make this game a draw. Here comes the Tesla Tower, that is, once again, going to act as a good distraction. He just has to stall for a minute and a half. Good use of the Barbarians as well, but she is, the Valkyrie is going to take out a good amount of damage, because, again, she 
attacks in an area now, around her. Now, I thought that may have been a preemptive freeze from Nazim, because he now doesn't have it. And a Hawk Rider's There's no freeze, and a Hawk Rider charging on the left-hand side. Wrecking Crew coming in on the left-hand side, trying to do as much tower damage as possible. Good defense on the poison. That's going to do big damage to every unit going in. Okay, so the poison moves used defensively that time. Nazim manages to keep his tower alive. 1,700 health, still a 1,000 health lead on Starody's left tower. But if Starody can hold out for 60 more seconds, he might be able to make this game a draw and keep things the way they are. Nazim just needs one good push. I mean, a couple of decent strikes from the Hog unit, and that 710 down. That damage tower. Oh, we'll get the sentence out eventually. It is going to go straight out of there. Now, Hog is going to be dead. There's the freeze to stop it from taking too much damage, but the tower itself, the Tesla tower, going to take things out. The poison, good. Going to do some chip damage on all these units. The goblins go down. Tesla tower might go down to it. Tower's taking a lot of damage too. Barbarian's taken, but there's the Hog Rider, but the Inferno Tower again. So ready. But he is going to go in, freezing the Inferno Tower, reserving a good amount of health. But once again, I do think the Hog Rider is going to get taken out before he goes in. And again, we have the AoE damage of the Ice Mage. Counter attack. Oh, Hog Rider goes left. The freeze has been used, but there's a Tesla Tower again to distract the Hog Rider. The Goblins, the freeze is good. Going to take out the Tesla Tower. If he can get this tower and get one more hit on this tower, he has a through, chance straight out. through. Who knows? He isn't going to get a crucial hit. This is going to go down to five seconds. In this situation, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be good because the thing is, Nazim does not have any now. specific range damage that he can just put. So this is potentially the last game of the set unless they draw, but... The question is, what is Starody going to do here? We see the Tesla Tower, but he did have that in his other deck as well with the Hog Rider. Very hard to tell what kind of deck Starody's built right now. I mean, I don't think he's gone for the Mortar. I really don't. And he's gone straight back into the Hog Rider. I do think he's gone straight back to the deck that won before. So the Giant Skeleton going to do a good job of soaking up all this damage. Hog Rider going to take some serious damage from the towers. Hog Rider might get through, but it depends what the Zeme's got. And there's a the Rocket. Wow, that was totally. an expensive defense right there. That's six Elixir just to counter any damage from the Hog Rider. But again, I think he's trying to go for the game plan of just waiting out the clock, playing to sudden death and then using some kind of large damage target to just get that one tower. Nazim's left tower taking a little bit of damage. I mean, not we're out a minute into the game right now and only down about 350 life, so it might have seemed too bad now, but we'll see how that seems a little bit later on in the match. But we know almost immediately there's two different spawners, a giant skeleton and a rocket and a good fiber once there, so we know again that playing defensively might be slightly harder for Steroidy than it is for Nazim because Nazim has higher single target damage with those spells. That was a really good lightning though, just to do some serious damage. I mean, again, he's already managed to take a couple hundred up and almost even things up just on that alone. Going in for that little minion army right there, just to handle the barbarians going straight in. The princess going to take out good damage, good AoE damage. Oh, there's the freeze. The one is going to take out this barbarian. Help. The princess, wow, has managed to be saved. Nazim's clutch arrows to keep her in the game. She's That's very low on health. Sending good data to Stroidy right now, though. Understanding that he also has arrows good to go, so he's going to be able to plan his next advance very carefully. Here come the goblins. I mean, they're not going to do a huge amount of damage by themselves. But they're going to shave off just a couple of little bits. Yeah, a couple right of there. hundred, couple of hundred. That's not so bad. I mean, just a little bit surely. A couple of hundred damage here and there is going to do it. Now, whoever wins this game moves on to grand finals. There's a minute left until we double the elixir. This is a very nerve-wracking situation for both of these players. You find the elixir has literally just been doubled. It's a minute until overtime. We see the Hog Rider going to do some damage to the Barbarian Hut, but the Hog Rider might not manage to get through this time. I think that was really good placement by Nazim to keep the Hog Rider off, and the Barbarian Hut again to keep things in. Putting the Barbarian Hut next to his weakest tower, very good call, going to do good damage to every single unit right there. The skeleton, the giant skeleton is very unlikely to reach that tower, especially with so much range. Oh, but do I speak too soon? Using the lightning to shut down oh, any the of that. The minions, though, the minions managed to fly out of the range. Oh, a few of them will get taken out. Sayonara, you are gone. The minions will definitely get taken out by the tower, but will the Barbarians get through? Princess is good, the Hog Rider. This is a big push right now, oh, using the rocket, rocket, saving it, good situation right there, it's going to do good damage anyway, but once again, saving that rocket for that situation, here comes the push with the giant skeleton, this could be the push, oh, that Steroidy. moves Nazim through into grand finals, this amazing aggression by Steroidy, but just keeping calm and collected as Nazim keeps himself in, the goblin barrel saved till the last minute, going to jump on the left, I don't think so, there's nothing to do, the goblin's going Ooh, straight no. in for the lightning right there, and that was that tried and tested combination of the giant skeleton and the goblin barrels, getting good damage, but here comes sudden death, one more tower, is going to decide who moves on into grand finals. Oh, what a game we have. Finishing into maybe going into our first grand final. So close. Left tower weak on both of them. They bring up, of course, something magical out of the end. Princess is making her way down. Double the spawner. I mean, that's a lot of pokes. She has uh -oh. to handle that immediately. Good use of the fireball. I agree with that. Just get rid of the danger immediately. Giant skeleton is good. Uh -oh. At least soak up. Well, at this point, if already has got the hog rider, barbarians are down. Does the hog rider follow? Now let's not forget as well, Nazim has got a rocket. If he gets oh, a good, no man, good, good, good use, here we go, this could be it! 500 health to go on the left, but Starody hasn't used his Hog Rider in a while, I'm sure he's got it ready. 
And we also know that Nazim might have a rocket ready to go just to put on that piece of pressure, but I like the fact that he's not spending it too aggressively just in case we see this Hog Rider push. There's the freeze! I was going to call it! They're already ready for it, but the Hog Rider actually is getting pushed around. The Goblin Barrel is good. This Hog Rider is no, but the Lightning takes them out. This is so close! The oh. Princess, Princess is going to do some damage if Storidi's not ready to counter her. 531 is to Roidy, 546 on Azeem, here comes a big push. Minion Army and the Hog Rider, here we go, this could be it! Oh no, the Hog Rider is looking and he is going to take the tower! Oh, the the left just get the rockets to go in with their fireball! Oh, and take out that tower! What a fantastic play there from Storidi, going straight in. He's going to move on into Grand Finals. What is up with Storoidy saving all of these spells in the just the nick of time? He is so on the back foot all the time, but he, he doesn't lose it. He doesn't throw these cards away. He keeps them for a rainy day, and it always rains, and he is always ready. He is your first Grand Finalist, guaranteeing himself €3,000 minimum. How many of these ridiculous plays are we going to see? It's all coming from Steroidy as well. Huge props to Nazim though. Absolutely phenomenal play. Probably uh, the best set we've had so far today. That was the set of the tournament. Can we just get no a round question. of applause guys for these guys bringing it out today. 200 of them came and these made top four, but 3-2. Wow. I mean, and one went down to a draw. So, I mean, it was more than that. What a set. That was incredible. I mean, right until the very end, it was even health. Like 30 hit points separated those left-hand towers. And then right at the end, we just think, we're almost, we're almost ready to wrap it up and go, right, that's over. But that really clutch missile just to handle all of those units. But then before we can even collect ourselves straight in with the fireball to just steal that grand final. Yeah, incredible spot. stuff. I mean, Mr. Roydy really showing why he deserves to be here. But the question is, who is he going to be against? And we're going to find out very soon. I'm pretty sure we're going we're gonna to get to an interview right now with our host, Sean. Take it away. Wow, Soroidi, that went right down to the wire. It must have been, I mean, it was nerve-wracking to watch. What was that like to play in? Well, the opponent was just just amazing, you know, like 3-2, to two, and I had like, like he could have just rocketed me and I would lose. It was just amazing. And I actually played something else than Mortar, so <laughs> I guess crowd likes me more now. Not like last time. <laughs> so I can confirm that no matter what, you're going to be taking home 3,000 euros because you are our first finest. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Steroidy69. <laughs> Wait right here, so I'll be right back. I, ha I have to say, Nazim, you played fantastically throughout. You, you are now going to be basically out of the tournament, and that's sad. That's but you sad. played very well. Can you tell us what what what, what were you thinking when when it was going down to that to that wire wire moment? Well, I wasn't expecting that hook rider at all. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was really good. It was really good. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause, of course, for Nazim.